Hey guys, John with JJ DJ back at it here, showing you guys part two of Show Express. Um, this is just showing you guys not all the features, just some of the stuff that we use that you know necessarily you may not know about or may not know how to use, or if you're trying to figure out what DMX software you're looking to um, go with, this may help um, help you decide. The first part we talked about um, adding new fixtures, creating new profiles for fixtures. Um, and setting the DMX addresses and so forth. Now what we're going to do is show you some of the stuff within the editor portion. So as you know, we already made a demo show. Um, my no universe is found, meaning that I don't have my USB um, could, um, dongle plugged in. So now we're going to go into the editor tab, which is this guy right here. And once we're in here, it's going to show you our fixtures that um, we have added in the first part. Now, remember when I was telling you that it really didn't matter what you named your fixtures, but it's going to show up in the editor and that from there, that's what you're going to have to be able to, to relate back to those fixtures as. So Q61 we know is our 1Q6, and then QSpot260-2 is our second one, and this is QSpot260-1. Now, I know it may not seem like that big of a deal with just three fixtures, but when you have 20 to 30 different fixtures in here, it is nice to be able to, you know, give your fixtures a good label that you're going to be able to recognize it by. So as you click the different fixtures, you'll notice that down here, they, um, the, the options will change as far as what fixtures those lights have to be able to um, do. So first thing, I guess, let me just show you, I guess let's do the QSpot 260s. So obviously now if you slide this up, your X axis will move. This is your Y axis. This is your color wheel, your gobo. The two QSpot 260s have a second gobo wheel, so that's your second gobo wheel. This is to rotate the gobos in the second wheel. This um, turns on the prism effect. The next one is going to be the focused, your dimmer, your strobe, and this is just a lamp on and off reset. So let's go ahead and show you guys the groups. Grouping is real nice if you have a let's say 20 moving heads and 40 um, par cans. And you, you don't want to sit here and click every moving head until you have all 20 or click all your par cans. So what you do is, you know, select them all right now for once, right click down in groups and click add new group. It's going to ask you to assign it a name. We're going to say these are going to be all QSpot 260s and then group key, which is just a, one of the letters on the keyboard, or I believe, yeah, you do uppercase as well. So either lowercase or uppercase letter will initiate this group. So we're gonna do a lowercase a, apply, and let's go ahead, excuse me, and do a Q6 as well. And we'll get that one B. Now, this really comes in handy again when you have a lot of fixtures. I mean, even if you just had 10 fixtures, it definitely helps. For example, our MMA rig that we do, we have two sides of the rig has moving heads. So one of the groups that I'll use is, you know, let's say this is just the left side. I would select all the Q spots that are on the left side of the rig, which is two of them right now. I'd right click, and then this would be left side movers and that would be C and then this side would be right side movers so it shows you what your your shortcut key is and then which group you're going to do so when you have you know a couple fixtures that are all on one side you want to be able to grab at one time instead of going through and clicking every one of them you just hit C, and then C would grab it. D would grab all the right-hand side. A would grab all the Q spots, and then B would grab, you know, the um, Q6s. And again, even if you were just doing the, the little number of fixtures as we're showing you this an example, um, it is still pretty quick just to, you know, hit a quick key instead of trying to, you know, drag and highlight. So the first thing is let's go ahead and this program Q6 is because I think those would be a little bit simpler to display versus trying to show you how to program moving head. So let's say we're going to make one scene. we got to turn the dimmer on. 
and I believe the shutter, we have to open the shutter up. So let's say the first thing, lights are gonna be red. So here, you can name it red light. Duration is five seconds. That's what you want. You're going to click next, add another one. And let's say this time now we're going to turn the red off and we're going to make all the lights blue. So now that, let's go here, blue light. Five second duration. And then now we're going to make the last one green. And let's go ahead and pull this halfway down because I know 165 is um, a strobe. And actually, if you make this window bigger, you can click these squares here to be able to go to some pre-made shortcuts. So I know the strobes, I was close, 135 strobe. So we'll make this one a green strobe. And since we don't want people going crazy, we're gonna make this strobe just be one and a half seconds and then click add. And then let's make one more that's white light. And the white, we're just gonna turn on red, green, blue, and there you go, now you have white. Now what you also can do with this is you have what they call the color, color wheel. Um, let me go ahead and add this light, turn that strobe back to full color. Okay, so the color wheel is Hold on. All right, and one more thing real quick, so just let you know what I just did. If you click this, it adds a new light to the first position of the scene. If you click the button to the right of it, it adds a new light at the last position of the scene. So really, it just comes down to how you're programming and what you're looking to do. So this one, we're just gonna name this one Color Wheel Color. Now what you can do here is you can click anywhere on this color wheel and as you can see it is changing the values of the red, green, and blue. So this really comes in handy when you have brides and you're wanting to color match their colors to their, to their particular wedding color. Um, some brides like that candy apple green. So if you know you want to work, you, know, you, show them, you can show them right there while they're with you and you can pick their colors out and you can you know, get it really close to their particular color they're looking for. Or if you're just trying to, you know, make some different shades of colors, you know, in um, in for a, a lighting for a band show, do the same thing. Color wheel is really nice to play with, and it just it makes programming multiple colors in these RGB fixtures a breeze. So we'll just, you know, just grab a pinkish. So there that is. So that will be the color wheel pink. Leave it alone. You don't need to add it because you've already added that that new um, particular motion, or I don't know what the actual terminology is, but you've already added it, so that's there. And so you can go ahead and play your scene back, and it'll show you one and a half seconds, one and a half seconds, one and a half seconds, five seconds. Now it'll stay blue. Then five seconds again, it'll be on red, and then it'll just automatically kick back up through the first position and go right back through the scene over and over again. So that would be your one scene. So if that's your scene, you're happy with it, and that's what you want to put into your live, you're going to go here and click Save. And we'll say, we'll name this the Q6 dash red, let's see what I do it as. Red, blue, green, strobe, and you know the it this again is something to name it so when you go to recall these files you're going to know what you're recalling exactly so when you're done just hit save another thing you could do and this is what I try to do when you start dealing with a lot of fixtures is I'll actually make folders for my Q spots and then I'll make a folder for my Q6s and then my MacBook freezes and crashes. Nope. And then I'll have a folder for my Q6s. And then if I have any files that are, you know, are custom for each event, I'll just go ahead and do custom scenes. And that way I just have a folder and they're not mixed in with all my other stuff. 
And so I'll just have three folders and I'll, or I'll have as many folders as I want and just save those particular scenes that are for particular light fixtures to those folders. Now, someone was asking me how to do the generator for moving heads. Let me stop this video and I'm going to make part three about the generator file.